What's up boys and girls? This is Dan here with once again another car video. Today I am going to be installing lowering springs. My 22 Genesis G70 all wheel drive. So one of my first mods was rims. Um, I got OZ Super Turismo's LMs, uh, 19 by 8.5 all around um, with the offset of 38. So it's not exactly flush, but with the 255s in the rear, you could tell it's almost right there. So I think once it's lowered, it's gonna look good. And personally, when a car is perfectly flush or even pokes a little, I think it looks kind of odd. So I don't mind it with a little tuck. The front looks very tucked because it's got a, I think 225 on it. Where is it? Yeah, 225. So it's got a little stretch up front. Now, what I did was purchase ARC Racing GTS Springs. <laughs> I'm going to walk over to them, they're inside, I totally forgot. So I got ARC GTS Springs. I will show you guys those later. It's a pretty conservative drop, maybe like 1.15 inches in the front and then the rear just over an inch, maybe one and a quarter, so not a lot, but this car definitely needs it. Now, the first step on doing this job is getting the right tools. Do not start this job if you don't have the correct tools or if you don't know what you're doing. Um, thankfully, through Amazon, the tools are very cheap to get. I was able to find all this for maybe $150, if not cheaper, all these items you see here. So I got a basic jack that comes with a case. It's only like 40 bucks. These little guys were about 30 a pair. Um, and then I got two sets of spring compressors to really compress the spring because I want to make sure I can get it off without having to lower my front hub that much because the car is all-wheel drive. So I got the tools. I'll show you guys the springs. Um, I've done this before multiple times with coilovers. I've never done just springs, but it's the same process. Um, you just got to know what you're doing. So fortunately for me, I did a lot of research. I've done it before. I have the tools and um, I watched a few guides. So now I'm going to do it myself. But as you can see, this car definitely needs some lowerage. So let me know what you guys think, and I will continue with the installation. All right, so my first step was using the jacks and the jack stands to simply jack up the car. My advice is to loosen the lug nuts first because if they're tight, uh, you're not gonna have fun doing it while the car's in the air. You should do it while it's on the ground so you have some more stability. So you jack it up on all fours, pretty simple this process alone takes a half hour this is why this whole process takes a while because you just gotta line everything up move everything adjust it um and then i went wheel by wheel so I take off the first wheel um don't be afraid of this this is pretty straightforward you have one sway bar link here that zips right off you just use the correct socket size i forget the size but um it's one nut it's that guy there and as you loosen it you need to put an Allen key or a torque set or something that fits in there because that will spin too as you rotate the nut off. So you just have to hold it in place as you take it off. The only other thing you really have to take off is the uh, tie rod over here. I didn't even have to use my, um, where is it? My joint separator, this thing zipped right off. And then I just moved this because it has some play as you could see. And then it literally fell out, came out so easy. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, I got that one bolt left down there, but as you can see, it's not a lot you have to loosen, so I will show you guys the next step. Alright, so coming to the top, you have a little black cap that pops, literally rips right off. They make it super easy to access this um, top of the strut bolt. Um, to loosen it, you need your socket just to blast it a little loose, and then you have to hold that um, nut as you twist the inner piston rod whatever you want to call it this guy here so i got a t50 bit on my gun torx t50 and i'm going to put this in like this and then with my vice grips i'm going to hold the socket down i can't do it with one hand and film but uh this is a 19 mil so this goes here and then i hold it with my socket and then i just drill from the inside all right so for the front i just did what i showed you guys that worked bear in mind you have to go uh righty when you're loosening that. You don't go left because you're holding the nut in place. So you actually have to tighten that inner strut rod to make the nut come loose, if that makes sense. So without disconnecting this, 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 the three upper mount bolts, I was able to simply 
compress the spring. Now look, see how loose it is? So what I'm gonna try to do is without avoiding damage to my axle or anything, I'm going to um, just gonna try to compress a little more and take it out all in one piece. We'll see right. if you can hear, I'm a little out of breath, but I'm going good here. I left this, I never took off the pinch bolt. I never took off the three upper, sorry, strut mount bolts. I just compressed it and uh, I lowered it a little bit and it looks like it's gonna come out. And now you see how it's hidden there? Remember, it's a shock, so you can compress it. So I got plenty of clearance on the spring. All I gotta do is just squish that in a little bit, hold it down and this will pull right out. And uh, it wasn't easy, but I got the driver's side off. I thought I could get away without taking off the pinch bolt. You gotta take off the pinch bolt because even if you leave it in and go to pull the strut out towards you, you're gonna be stressing and pulling the axle. So you cannot do it without removing the axle or taking off the bottom control arm bolts. But I loosened the pinch bolt. I put the nut back in on top to hold it in place. So then when I dropped the hub, it pulled right out and then I was able to take it out. So now I can drop spring. I finished the driver's side. Once you do it, and understand how the suspension moves. It's not as bad, so the other side will go a lot quicker. Uh, what I had to do is, I definitely had to loosen this pinch bolt here. Uh, I didn't have to touch any of these bolts, the lower control arm bolts. I just did the tie rod, like I said. I did not do the three nuts up here. I just did the center nut. Be very careful with that center nut, because it will strip. I had it strip on the other side, but I just got it off. Uh, the sway bar, like I said, you definitely have to take out. I mean, the end link. And then this hub will tilt out towards you. And uh, you just don't want to let it go all the way because then it could pull out the axle shaft. But I think I'm good. I, you know, I rotated mine. It seemed all right. So once that's in there, I did the same thing with the other side. I left this top nut tightened as I compressed my spring and then dropped uh, the hub with the jack because that top nut held the shock in place so when I dropped the hub it naturally pulled the bottom of that this big ass strut out and this thing goes fucking deep look at that you need a lot of space to get that bitch out so be careful take your time I got it out hard part's done to put the new springs on you do or should compress them just a little bit they're obviously shorter but it makes it a lot easier getting in I would also recommend this type of spring comp compressor because it's much thinner. You can get them in the corners. So my knees are killing me. I'm a little out of breath. I'm an out of shape old fuck, but uh, I'm doing good. So stay tuned. Okay, the fronts are in. The hard part is done. I, uh, like I said, I was able to do this without taking these three upper strut bolts off. I left the top hat attached to the car. It was just a center nut I removed. Um, but before I removed it, I left it tight with the springs compressed. So when I jacked up my hub and then lowered it, like I said, the springs will hold on to the, um, or the compressors will hold on to the spring. And then once you drop the hub, that upper nut will hold this or will release this because this is dropping and this is being held up, if that makes sense. Um, I feel like I lucked out because I have all-wheel drive, and you have to watch because these front axles are very, I don't want to say sensitive, but you can only move it so much, and there's a, a point where you have to pull this out. The tip of this is going to come out towards you, so then effectively you're pulling out that front axle, so you want to be careful, but, you know, I gave mine a few spins. or feel any resistance. It's very hard to do this while filming, but that's really it for that. And then the front, I mean the rears, should just be those two bolts right there. And then you support it with the jack. Um, so when you do take them out, you slowly let down the jack and then the spring releases. And then you just put it back on there and you line them up and then you put it back in. Uh, the rear is very easy, thank God, but I should be able to finish. And I'll show you guys how it looks. All right, now with the rears, like I said, they're pretty easy. It was those two bolts I just showed you guys. You have to hold the other end so you could get the bolt out. If it's not coming all the way out, you could jack it up or you could kind of pull the bolt as you loosen it. It will uh, help suck it out. So once those two bolts are loose, 
you'll see the rear shock will drop or the rear spring. And then this lower control arm, as you can see, let me focus here, it's flexible. So I, with my foot, I kind of lay it on my butt and then just kick that down and then the spring comes out and then you just put the new one in.